All right, so we're, today we're going to roll into uh, the issues that uh, are common in our market right now. This one being what's going on with brokerage compensation uh, as a buyer's agent. We, you know, I think most of us have heard that there are big lawsuits going on there. And I know I've touched on this and it's, it's where we've had folks that uh, large firms have gotten sued and decided to settle because the gray area they were playing in is dangerous. Um, and I'll put it out there. What, what they, in my opinion, were doing was saying, Hey, this is what we work for. That's it. According to our own code of ethics, section 12, you can't do that. Uh, it has to be that it's negotiable. They may be unwilling to negotiate, but you still have to indicate that it's negotiable and uh, that they can go to somebody else if they don't want to, uh, they're not happy with your negotiation. Uh, fact of the matter is, of course, I think it's silly to give up a, a seller because of a, a small amount of a percentage. Um, we still have a deal right? We still have something to work with. So that's what we're after. But this is uh, talking about, and this is great. This is from Melissa Tracy. She, she's she been writing for, and this is through NAR. Uh, but I, I was looking with Leah and uh, we talked about this and I said, what would represent well as far as how to explain this? And I found this article. I'm like, I can't say it any better. So here we are. Lawsuits are scrutinized, uh, scrutinizing the way buyers or agents are paid. And uh, it's the way the content's being presented. And this is going to provide tips, conversations about having, uh, you should have with your clients. So the real estate industry is facing lawsuits over buyer's agent's compensation. So we need to be sure that everything that we do is totally transparent and have these discussions up front with our uh, buyers and honestly with our sellers. But this is more on the buyer's side, but a lot of the sellers are doing it too because they're going, why are we paying the buyer's agent side? Why is that not negotiable? In reality, it is. So um, we, we need to make sure that we present these things carefully in this light and people need to understand because we could put, if a seller wanted us to, 1% is the buyer's agent compensation. And pay us the rest. Yeah. Or not pay anything. Right. And, pay and so with that, I mean, or I can take three, and, and pay out one, and you, this buyer's agent, you hope, has a, a, a compensation agreement with their buyer, or um, they're working for 1%, or you know, with certain builders, a thousand bucks or something stupid, but these things occur, and uh, we need to be able to express our value clearly. So I'm gonna stop right there. If you can't sell yourself on your own value in front of a mirror, and you wouldn't buy from yourself, why would a buyer? practice if if you don't if you're not working with this type structure much practice it's like anything else if you want to be good with a gun practice if you want to be good with uh, asking somebody out on a date practice you know no none of you guys should be doing that of course you're all married but i'm just saying uh, <laughs> don't practice pra <laughs> practice practice dating with your wife that's right so uh these are important things and they're talking about the abr designation here uh which which is a good one um, so, you know, as, as an approved, I guess, as approved by accredited buyers rep. Yep. There you go. Thank you, Leah. So, um, you know, it's a designation that you can get and they go really in deep into this or in depth into this. And uh, I think that the more education we have, the better we're going to be able to do with what we do. Oh, of course you get your continuing ed, ed time. So, so, um, you know, the buyer's rep agreement is essential. And it, here's the thing, it naturally facilitates these discussions. Instead of it being uh, awkward or, um, or odd, um, they're just normal and it comes out organically when you go here. So agents should spend time explaining to customers how real estate commissions are paid. If we, even when we do that, we can do it until we're blue in the face. Somebody may still go to a buyer uh, or to a uh, open house and buy without you. They might go to a builder and go, well, I didn't know. Yeah. And you've explained it to them. I know that's hard to believe, isn't it? Uh, and, and not use yeah. their agent. That's yeah, just, a bit. it's just crazy, but it happens to all of us. So if you, if you haven't been in business uh, long, you know, you will experience these things kind of like being a boater. If you're a boater, uh, you're going to get towed in at some point. It happens. Uh, motors break and deals break with buyers. So background on compensation lawsuits. And I'm going to read this because it's so good. Recent class action lawsuits filed against the National Association of Realtors and four large real estate franchisers allege 
that sellers are unfairly required to pay the buyer's broker commission and falsely assert that sellers do not have any ability to negotiate. So what we've just been talking about and being clear. And that whole line right there, that's the biggest thing because commissions are always negotiable. Whether you negotiate or not, people need to know that they're negotiable. Other people may do it for, for next to nothing. Or you can put your, your uh, listing in with a, a broker that only charges a fee to put it out there and all calls go to you. And, and uh, you have terrible representation because it's kind of like being in court. Now you're your own attorney, you're your own realtor. It's not a good idea. We'll get them more money. Uh, it's just people don't, a lot of people don't understand that unless we establish our value and we show them the lists of things that we do on a daily basis. People don't get what our job is until they find themselves in our shoes and then they're going, help me. Uh, so we want to be there to help them, right? Realtors must not represent uh, that their brokerage services to a client or customer are free uh, or available to them at no cost unless the realtor will receive no financial compensation from any source for those services. I may kind of toe that line a little bit because I'm like, look, it doesn't cost you anything to use me. My services to you are basically free. And then I roll into because... And I, I'll tell them that we have our brokerage fee, but because the seller pays our compensation. However, if I'm a little smarter than that, I'm going to use the forms that are out there that get me the remainder of my commission. And I know agents that have used these nonstop, and it's simply a matter of presenting well. When you're meeting with these buyers and having these discussions, don't show up in blue jeans and a t-shirt. Don't do it. Look the part. Uh, be, be a professional in what we do. Uh, it's one thing on a, on a day when you're not meeting with folks like that, or if you're going to a new build, if you're going to a new build, it's fine. But I remember back when I was a home inspector, I'd show up with my tan, tan pants on or khakis, whatever. And, uh, one of my shirts that had my home inspection logos on it. And the agent would show up in blue jeans and a t-shirt and the seller oftentimes, would, or this happened several times would come out and go, who's the agent? And the agent would be turning red and he'd be going, Inspector looks better than you do. And I'm like, yeah, but I won't in a few hours, man. You know, I'd cover for him. I'm going to be the one crawling through your attic. But it, it is important to dress the part. Now, when you talk about this, you need to know that you're trying to blow away the thought processes that people have. You're reestablishing in their minds new thoughts. So when we're doing that, Initial buyer consultation. The agent and client should formally establish compensation expectations. A lot of buyers will walk in here and they think they're paying your whole way. Uh, and you need to let them know that they may pay a part of it, but all in all, no, uh, the seller's going to cover that. And you know how to you know how to cover those things. But we need to go here and we manage those ex expectations. If we manage the expectation up front, it's always easier. It's kind of like having a home inspection. I'd rather have a thorough one and know what I'm going to work with uh, or have to negotiate instead of something coming up after the fact and blowing our deals up. Okay, so opportunity for a buyer's agent to share their value. We just discussed that. Encounter any notion that a conversation is determined by the seller or by the listing agent. Okay, so use a buyer rep agreement. This helps you and your buyer establish the compensation from the start. The agreement provide, provides the compensation under which you'll get paid, how much, and by whom. These different structures are awesome to use, guys. And, you know, it's going to show you uh, different buyer's reps get different kind of things out of different sellers, what they're willing to pay. Our office policies will uh, clearly specify that, you know, we we don't say, hey, it's a it's a flat percentage. It's It's a matter of... It's negotiable. Come to me if it's too low because we're not willing to work for that. Uh, but we are if we can get another compensation line. Otherwise, I don't want you guys out there working for free. You're too good. You work too hard for it and you have families to support. Um, the buyer can pay you a closing or they have the option uh, to ask the seller to pay it. So if you have a buyer's rep agreement, you know right away from the beginning how you're going to get paid for your professional services, right? Disclose any extras. This is important. Uh, this goes right down our, our trail of our office disclosure, which clearly discloses the transaction fee and, uh, and those things and everything else that buyers need to watch out for. We also show it to the seller because there's, it applies to both. So again, they're going back into the ABR class and uh, how it can help address these things and compensation agreements and situations, which I think are important to know. So we've disclosed the extras, right? Here we are. 
we are into the agreement. Hey, I'm glad we talked for a while because this didn't take terribly long to get into, but this is important. This is the one that's just a standard by our association. And, um, you know, it's written by their attorneys, not us. You just fill in the blanks, guys. And when people see this, it's, it's obvious that, hey, you know, this is a professional form. This is what we do. Present it as though it is standard everyday business, you know, just like any contract turn. Hire me, sign here. If we're not doing that with buyers already with our buyer loyalty agreement, we're, we're messing up anyway because they may not feel loyal to you. And they sign something, they're going, I'm bound to them, even though they could can you tomorrow, according to our agreements. It's just, this is the way we present it, right? So you need to make sure that they understand and you want to work through this with them. It's the exclusive right to work with and assist a buyer in locating, negotiating, because we want to be their exclusive uh, buyer broker. And the term acquire uh, acquisition includes any purchase, option, exchange, lease, acquisition of ownership or equity uh, in any real property. It gives you the term, uh, how long is this going to last? People wanna know is there a termination date? I guess, <laughs> oops, ah, I went too far. I guess that when you're in here, you could easily uh, say, uh, to be determined here, but it's best to just give them an end date. Um, I typically do these things for a year. And yeah. uh, people are like, can we do it for 90 days? Sure, if that's what you want to do. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, I'm going to be, if we don't find you something within that sure. time period, I'm going to be bringing it back to you again. And people are like, yeah, that's fine. I'm like, or you can fire me. If I'm not doing my job, please do. But I would like an explanation of what I, where I dropped the ball and what I didn't do well or I didn't do effectively to help you find that property. Mm -hmm. um, and I will say, even with buyers, I have some that tell me they're working with another agent, uh, friends and things like that that do that uh, off and on. Uh, but they have another family member somewhere else that's helping them and all these things. And it's like, that's okay. Let me be your 411. Man, I don't want you to miss out on these properties. Yeah, rates are up, but look at this. These builders are doing this. And, you know, um, I found out that Leah uh, did a presentation uh, off the cuff to one of our, our neighbors. I ended up doing the same presentation to her husband he did. Uh, when, when I was pruning some bushes and he was outside mm -hmm. that, hey, uh, you know, I, I was thought about you guys when I saw this. You guys don't want to miss out on this, but, uh, you know, make sure, make sure and tell your agent. And uh, so, yep, that's the way it went. And then uh, I found out later that Leah had talked to the wife. So anyway, it's just kind of funny. Uh, at Wawa, there you go. <laughs> But but now, if, if that's not training and us going through things together and learning together, we've now presented our value. And that starts to rub off on people to the point where if they haven't signed this kind of thing with someone else, they may finally go, hey, you know what? I appreciate what you guys are doing, man. She doesn't even talk to me or he doesn't even talk to me. And and you guys are sharing this information with me, knowing that I'm not going to work with you. Are you guys nuts? And it's like, yeah, we just care about you and want to see you do well in life. I just want to give you value. Uh -huh. that I didn't think That's was right. going to show value that really did it was even getting um, clients signed in at like a ranch, even if that wasn't their target area. Mm -hmm. But I literally had a couple like, oh, wow, you really know what you're doing. Our other, our other agent never talked about this. Right, right. And if, if you don't get them signed in and they end up going there to a builder without you, you're out of luck. If you're signed in and they go to a builder without you, you still get paid. Praise God. Um, so there's that. Unfortunately, it doesn't go for the whole state that way. Uh, <laughs> so um, anyhow, you know, again, this is just going to express the type of property here. You could be uh, put to be determined or you can put down multiple property types. Uh, the standard, I think, is a single family residence, but it might be condo, townhome. Uh, and hey, they may be looking for commercial as well. Anything they've talked to you about, put it in there. What's wrong with putting it in there? Location. Uh, it doesn't have to be here because you may be referring them somewhere, okay? And the one of the important things, though, is price range. I'll go back to that. We need a range. And if they haven't been pre-qualified, we need to work with them on getting this done. But this, again, is saying, oh, you're not. Okay, well, it makes it hard to present an offer when you are ready if we don't have this done. And pre-qualified is, uh, is simple. It's not really what you want. we want you to do, even though this form is bolded. It. We want you to be pre-approved. So when, when you do get this done, we're rocking. We're moving forward and we're getting you a property. So broker's obligations under this. It's important to be able to say this. 
you know, we will use professional knowledge and skills. And we're going to help you with determining your financial capability and financing options. People are like, what? It's like, yes, because we're going to try and put you with the best lenders we know of uh, if you'll allow us to. Some don't want you to, and that's okay. Discuss the property requirements. Go down through these things. You're locating, you're viewing all the suitable properties. You're, go you're going to do all these things with them. You're going to do the contract for the property. You're going to monitor those deadlines. You're going to make sure that this transaction comes together for them and they end up with their new home. You're going to cooperate with a listing agent and uh, work with the seller, right? So these are important and uh, you know, for buyers to understand uh, if a broker's compensation by the seller and or uh, licensed real estate, uh, licensee, however you want to put it, is working with the seller, that compensation does not compromise broker's duties um, to the buyer. So we're still going to have the same duties no matter what we get paid, but we're going to ask them to please help us is the bottom line by making us whole. Another line to use when you're presenting this is we're, we're just asking that you make us whole. Uh, and they're like, what do you mean whole? Well, the standard for a, uh, a broker uh, and for a buyer's agent is 3%. Standard in the industry. Can't even say that. Is that right? No, you can't say standard. That's why all these lawsuits are Oh, my happening. gosh. You got to come up with another way to phrase it. Hmm, Leah, I mean, Leah always makes me think about this. That our brokerage what's, normally. Uh, well, or, or what's what's common in the industry is. Is the way say to say it, I suppose. My well, standard, I guess commission. you're saying standard my, in, you could, indicates. You could say my standard commission that, you know, or most of my clients that I work with to go down this route. What we that typically be, what yeah. we typically work for is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can say it like differently. Right. And so yeah. instead of like work for, it's like typically my clients. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yay. Or, well, or, or phrasing. Things. Yes, that's that's important. It's the common. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. It's but but that's but it's important because it ties to fair housing laws. So I think we we need to keep each other uh, square on these. And I'm glad Leah does this for me because I've been doing it for so long that I'm used to saying things in certain ways. And it's important that we understand. How do you state familiar status? How do you state what, what they are this week? Right. That's right. So service providers. Let's keep going. <laughs> you guys are blowing me away. I'm getting lost here. All right. Let's go back here. Uh, uh, so fun. So fair housing service providers. Broker doesn't warrant or guarantee products that are provided by a third party. Um, you know, we, we even though we help them get with certain uh, providers to take care of them. We can't guarantee that what they're doing in their products or services in any way, right? So I better use this instead of the mouse because it jumps three screens. Buyer's obligations. Isn't it important to tell people what um, their obligations are? Because that's what they're really looking for. And uh, some people will refuse to sign this thing, by the way. And then you need to determine whether you want to work with them or not. Mm -hmm. And what you can even do at the bottom of it is say, uh, a uh, buyer refused to, refuses to sign this uh, document and uh, doesn't agree to this. Would you please sign here? And then I can still work with you. And they're going, what? And they'll, they'll sign that, but they won't sign this. It's so interesting how it works, but it, it does work. Um, and with some people, that's the way it's going to be. And you need to make a, a business decision. Are you willing to work for what's being presented in the MLS only? And either way, you've now presented to them your value, but maybe you haven't presented it to them uh, in a way that made sense to them where they're willing to pay that. So, you know, they, they need to know that, you know, conducting all of these negotiations, you guys can read this, but it's the bottom line is we're working with other agents. They need to give us the opportunity to work hard for them and do our job. And uh, we're going to, and, and here's the deal too. They need to provide us with accurate personal and financial information in connection with assuring that they're going to acquire property. You know, it's one of those things. Buyer authorizes broker to run a credit check. We're not running a credit check. We're handing it to a um, a lender. And uh, we're going to verify that information. The nice thing is when they uh, at least give authorization for that to be released to us. And uh, we need to request that. Uh, if we were to get it directly from 
a lender and not have the buyer's authorization to have it, uh, that's not a good thing. We need to make sure. So we're going to be available. Or the, this is, again, buyer's obligations. Being available to meet with us at reasonable times for consultations, to view properties. In other words, it's like, hey, I want to work with you. I want to get this done. But you've got to work with me to help you get this done. Right? And I mean, these are just basic things, in my opinion. So we're just to have a hold harmless section here now, too. Right? Including all these different things, attorney's fees. And uh, yeah, how about not asking or expecting to restrict the acquisition of a property according to race, color, religion, sex, handicap, familiar stat familial status, county national origin. Does this sound familiar? Yeah, fair housing laws. They're not allowed to break them uh, and they're not allowed to ask us to break them. And if they are, we just need to let them know. And uh, that that is a section of things that we can't discuss. And, uh, you know, they can go visit communities and, and check out whatever they need to check out. But the bottom line is um, that's something that we are not going to break. Uh, we're not going to go to, to uh, real estate jail for them or face a lawsuit for it. Consulting an appropriate professional for legal tax, all of these different things they should do. So, you know, again, you, you can also we could also ask for the retainer up front. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, the non-refundable fee uh, that I have done on these before is our 295 transaction fee, just a broker fee. Um, because And people will, will write that check very often. It's not a problem. And uh, then you can just hold it and we're good. Compensation. This is, again, going to just spell out uh, how much you're expecting to earn through this transaction. What are they willing to negotiate <clears throat> and um, agree to pay you? Right. So wouldn't it be kind of silly to not use this if you're if you're working with a buyer and you know what's going on with our with our economy right now and, and with our our business? It's changing as it changes more. I think we're going to be using these more and more. And we have a protection period, just like you do on a, uh, any other contract that we do. We have an early termination agreement. You know, it's one of those things. Broker may terminate this agreement at any time with written notice to the buyer. And so then the buyer's released. So it's a two-way street. A lot of people don't think we can fire them. It's like, oh, sure we can. Oh, I'm gonna fire oh you. yeah, you, you push me too hard and uh, you're going to go work with somebody else that's uh, not willing to be a professional in their field. Dispute resolution. I think it's important that these things are stated again uh, because, again, uh, if we can get them to work in mediation, nobody loses. If it goes to binding arbitration, uh, somebody's going to lose uh, financially. Not a good deal. Brokerage relationship, it's good for us to understand and express to them again that we're just going to be dealing honestly and fairly with them, account for all funds, due diligence, due care. This is this is what was always in the, the brokerage forms uh, when we had to have, whether it was a single agent, a transaction broker, which, whichever way it was being presented to them. Um, but this also clarifies that for them. They sign, we sign, and we get them a copy of this, and we keep a copy of it in our files. And when it comes time to uh, close, this, of course, will go to the closing agent. All right? <clears throat> what I, was, uh, yeah. what, what is, I've never, I've never seen that word. What? Where are you? Facsimile. Oh, facsimile? Facsimile. Facsimile, it's a copy thereof. Uh, it's an image. Got it. So receipt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fancy word. For Use this. the oh, words. Mind like, <laughs> blown. I've learned a new word. There you go. Um, there you go. So, well, and let's keep going here for just one second. Uh, our our wrap up on this was never give up on a dream. A dream just because of the time it will take to accomplish it. The time will pass anyway. I like that a lot. And uh, so that's the end of our training. We're going to do some uh, Q&A that we'll, we'll go ahead and leave on this recording as well because it may answer some other questions. Go ahead, Chris. So you're walking through the buyer through this agreement. Mm -hmm. If they agree to pay 3%, but you go show a property at 2%. Uh-huh. Make you whole with the one. Mm -hmm. But you need to make sure that you let the buyer know that, hey, this property is only going to pay me 2%, which means you're going to pay me the other 1%. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it goes over well, sometimes it doesn't go right. over well. Which sometimes they go, there you go, well, I only want to see the property then. Correct. Which is fair enough, right? That's not your choice, then it's their choice. Correct. Then I feel like they wouldn't say that if they'd already signed this. Well, you never know. 
some they may be protecting their protecting their pocket now right sometimes for me i don't even go down the route of um telling them about the price on commission side until we've seen it mm -hmm. and then once they're like decide that they really want to put in an offer so then in the process you know as i'm writing the contract I'm like hey guys just want to let you know as we're doing this you know i know i'm filling out everything but um, the commission on this one is two and a half or 2%, mm -hmm. um, kind of as the agreement states, or, Hey, you know, some agents do this for discount. Is there any way that you guys would be able to make me whole? Cause sometimes I don't even have this sign. Right. And it's, and some, I've had some people be like, well, do I have to be like, no, you don't have to. I'm just asking, this is just mm -hmm. my job. And this is what I do for my family. You don't right. have to do this, but this is something just, it kind of shows, uh, for me, like, you know, Hey, if, if you're willing to pay me for the process. I know in the beginning I mentioned it would cost you nothing, yep. but you know, due to this agent having a discount, you know, mm -hmm. you'd be willing to make me hold the two and a half. Right. But see, we can't say it'll cost them nothing or it's free because we're getting compensation. So that's the other verbiage part mm -hmm. that has changed with this, mm -hmm. uh, which is hard for me too. But it's like, I, I knew I told you that it was, was free for you because they're paying my fee. I'm getting paid, but they're only paying a percentage of it. So if you would if you would cover the uh, other 2%, I truly appreciate it because right, it's like, how I provide for my family right. and put gas in my car. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's how I get to these shows. I need some dental work, you yeah. know, but, it is, <laughs> but it is important. Would you, instead of saying a percentage, a dollar amount in that case, because if you, you say 2% and then you get to a day or two before closing and they see the statement, they go, $10,000? Well, yeah, that's 2%. I like percentage. Mm -hmm. If somebody can't run that math, okay. Yeah, um, but it's both sides. Percentage may not scare them, but then also saying a number could be like, oh, it's only three grand? Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. I'll do that for you. But then some people are like, $3,000? Because some people yeah. don't think the value of real estate agents are like valuable. I there you go. That. Oh, yeah. So, see it as that. I mean, Here's what I see it as. You need to feel out the person. So whichever way they're going to respond the best as far as you're concerned is the way you present. Um, and, you know, it's, it's just honoring their thought process as well. So, you know, and again, uh, you're honoring them and you're asking them to honor you. That's all. Um, and the fact of the matter is what Joey just said is very, very valid that a lot of people, again, don't understand the value of, of a real estate agent and, and broker. That's where it's so important to do this stuff, I swear, in front of a mirror or your phone, record yourself, watch yourself and go, would I sign that if they, if I was presenting that to me? Nope, let's try again, <laughs> you know? Uh, and then it's like, yeah, boy, I explained that well. Boy, I explained that well. That's great. Of course I'd sign that. And now what if you hit the objections of the, uh, well, no other agent's making me sign these things. Well, you know, the bummer about that is what they're not doing then is they're not clearly uh, showing you uh, what is negotiable and what we do, which you have no idea what they're really going to ask you in the tail end. I want to iron these things out up front. And uh, so does every brokerage do this? Here's the idea. This is clear cooperation. This is where these lawsuits have come from lately in our industry. It's because people aren't clear with this. I want to be clear with you. And uh, you know, I'm an honest, honest guy. That's what I'm going to do, right? Or an honest girl or an honest lady, whatever. Um, it's just, I'm going to be clear with you. Right. And sometimes it you over communicate and you may lose a sale, but who cares? In and, my mind. Like, right. Like, and it's like, if I'd rather be in the way of like, like just honesty and they may look back and be like, oh, well, okay, sure. He did. He over communicated or I felt like he gave too much information. Mm -hmm. But at least I know he's being honest and forth forth and all the way. Here's the other thing that happens with that one. I've had this happen. I've been doing this just a day or two. But what, what I've ran into is they see your integrity. They go work with somebody else to get a deal together. Back. And then they come back to you yeah. on when they want to sell and they refer all their friends to you because it's like, I didn't realize how much the integrity mattered in this. But man, I work with this other person and, yeah. and they got their commission and disappeared yeah. and I never talked to, they never yeah. helped me with anything. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So just totally that, different level. Just said that with a mm -hmm. listing. It was one of my first, it was going to yeah. be one of my first listings and they there were with someone go. else. And mm -hmm. recently they're like, saw me at like uh, Papa's and they're like, hey, Perfect. they felt so, I was like, yeah. <laughs> years ago relax guys like, uh -huh. like and they're like well whatever we do <laughs> oh i've i've had people come back to me um and say I, I know we didn't listen to you and then we bought this property and and now we're totally upside down on it um do you hate us or would you be willing to work with it? it's like 
No, I've always loved your family. I, you just chose a different direction. I just, just because I thought it was a wrong decision for you and I made that clear to you, doesn't mean that my opinion's like, uh, Right. just written in stone that you guys should do it was just I, I am God. it was just that's, that's no not true. <laughs> right it, it was just my opinion yeah. and uh you know i value you guys so i wanted to make it clear to you and then you went with somebody else they obviously didn't have that same opinion and they were like no they didn't care about us i'm like right yeah. and they got paid and you bought a property that has issues yeah, yeah. i know it it happens yeah.